What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. And the New York Giants recently had a center in for a free agent visit, and they also are continuing to fine and dine and wine with wide receiver prospects. Zay Flowers is next on the list of prospects that the Giants are going to be buying dinner for. And they have also been interviewing with some free agents here and there, a linebacker who just got re-signed by the Packers. They missed out on that one. Probably would have been a good signing. A little added depth in the linebacker core would have been nice, but now we know that the center position has become one of the most, one of the biggest needs for the New York Giants as we continue to march our way through free agency and heading towards the NFL draft. J.C. Hassenauer, he was a, the free agent that the Giants just brought in for a visit, formerly played in the AAF, 28 years old. We're going to go ahead, break him down, discuss what this visit might mean for the Giants, what their options are at center, and of course, also take a little look at Zay Flowers and discuss why we like him for the Giants, why we're excited by him meeting with the Giants and having dinner. But before we do all of that, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this this episode and subscribe to the channel if you are new and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. But without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today and what are your thoughts on the upcoming topic? Well, JC Hassenauer is an interesting player in the Giants, obviously bringing in players who have some versatility. He has uh, reps at guard, at left guard and center specifically. But, you know, this isn't going to be a starting center for us, right? Like there have been you know, rumbles that Ben Bredesen could be thrown into the mix there, but I still very much feel as though the Giants are going to draft a center. I know a lot of people have mentioned John Michael Schmitz and Tippmann um, as potential solutions, and, you know, if they go after a guy or a top receiver in the first round or a corner, whatever it might be, maybe they go and look for Tippmann in the second round. Um, There's certainly, like, you don't see teams draft centers in the first very often. In fact, like, it's a pretty much a rarity never happens you look to the second round to kind of solve that spot so I think the Giants will take that avenue um, find a young core piece for the you know solution at the center spot Uh, but for the time being they're bringing in guys like JC has an hour to you know kind of gauge whether or not they have any value moving forward you know this is a player who you mentioned playing the AFL AF something like that but he was a free agent Um, undrafted back in 2018 by the Falcons, and he's kind of moved around from the Falcons, and then he ended up in Pittsburgh, and he's played almost 700 career offensive snaps. Last year, he only played in 46 snaps, but he played in 345 um, in 2021, and over the course of his career, he's only given up two quarterback hits, 10 hurries, and 12 total pressures, so he's never given up a sack. However, during his rookie season back in 2020, um, or rather the first time he actually got NFL experience, he gave up five penalties. So he's only given up one penalty since then, no penalties in 2021. But, you know, he has a lot of uh, experience at left guard in addition to center, 147 snaps at guard and 545 at center. So obviously you see it definitely leads toward uh, that center spot, and the Giants could use some support there, even if it means just a depth piece that can compete. Um, And he's probably a veteran minimum guys so you just need bodies at this point like Bredesen yes he could kind of transition over to the center position uh but I don't see him as a long-term solution there I think you draft somebody you bring in someone with some experience and you know some value and you have them compete uh for the starting spot now we know that the you know John Feliciano signed with but I believe the 49ers and then Nick Gates is over with the commanders so we will you know maybe miss them a little bit you know they didn't really do all that much for us we love Nick Gates obviously but the injury definitely kind of hurt his progress I think uh, he would have been a long-term solution for us if it wasn't for that injury. Um, obviously, goes and signs a three-year deal, I believe, with the Washington Commanders. It's just certainly awesome for him with a nice chunk of change. And then Feliciano gets a one-year deal with the 49ers. The Giants didn't want to bring him back. So I guess that kind of tells you all you need to know about those two guys. Like, they did not value them enough to bring them back. And they're looking for solutions. They're not looking for stop gaps. They're not looking for, um, you know, versatile guys who can just fill in. They're looking for someone who can be the guy, the man, for the next couple of years, Anthony. So when you're looking at the draft right now, which seems like the easiest solution to uh, kind of plug the center spot are you looking in the second round because I feel like that's probably where we end up going I look look I love John Michael Schmitz I think he's a tremendous player but it is like objectively not the best strategy to draft centers in the first round you look in the second round for those kind of players um so I feel as though that may be the angle we take well, a lot of good centers are drafted even later than the second round. I don't even think that the New York Giants need to take a center within the first two rounds. A lot of quality guys, because listen, one of the things with the center position is it's very easy to get by with someone who's plainly average, and the Giants can probably find someone who is plainly average in those middle rounds. He can develop into something better one day, but that's really all you need. It's it's a luxury to have an elite center, to have like a Jason Kelsey type player. Th- those are few and far between, but also teams don't really prioritize guys like that. It's not necessary to have such a 
dominant center in the modern day of the NFL because most of the pass rushers they're either taking their uh, they're either taking their approach at the tackle or the guard spots. The center on a lot of plays is actually just helping out the rest of the guys in pass protection in the running game as well. They snap the ball and then the guard pulls across them or behind them. That's usually how it goes. So a lot of the times the centers, yes, it's an important position. It's a quarterback of the offensive line. There is a lot of value to be had in it, especially depending on your scheme, but it's not the most important position. And that's why you see a lot of NFL teams, successful NFL teams, get by, get very deep into the playoffs with just plainly average centers. But the Giants in recent years have had a lot of below average centers. Now we just need to find a guy who is at least average. Would I love to have an elite guy like a John Michael Schmitz? Yes, absolutely. I would. If they take him at 25, I won't be upset. I won't complain. I will like the pick, but you are right. Taking a center in the first round, it's rare and it's rare for a reason. We had guys like Tyler Linderbaum last year. People said he could be a top 10 pick. He might be the pick for the Giants at seven. He ended up going in the twenties because NFL teams do not value centers like that. And that's why even John Michael Schmitz, who knows, maybe he doesn't even get drafted until the second round because he's the best center in the draft. And yet he doesn't have that high of a grade. A lot of a lot of analysts and a lot of uh, websites are naming him a second round grade. The idea is he might get pulled into the first round, get drafted in the first round because he's the best center on the on the on the draft board. However, he might just fall anyway because he is a center, and NFL teams don't seem to care all that much about the center position. So the Giants, do they need to go with a center in round one? Do they need to go with a center round two? No. Do they need to go with one by round five? Yes, probably. The, by round five, they should draft an interior offensive lineman, whether that's a guard, center, or left guard or right guard. You know and when you take a look at some of these guys, there is a lot of talent in the draft. I, the the player that we're mentioning in free agency, that's a depth piece. That's all that's going to ever be. The Giants need depth in their on their offensive line. They don't have a lot of it right now. I think for the last couple of years, they've had a lot of depth, but they haven't had any starters. Now they also need to go ahead and find a starter. They can keep signing all these depth pieces, but the Giants' offensive line is not going to improve until they find bona fide starters on their offensive line. And that's why the, you can make the argument that, yes, by round two, they need to draft at least one interior offensive line, and I think that makes sense, but this draft class just doesn't have that much offensive line talent. At the tackle spots, yes, it's loaded, but interior offensive line, there's a real lack of talent at that position in this year's draft class. You've got guys like Joe Tipman, though, who gets a lot of round two projections. I saw him mock drafted to the Giants with the 25th overall pick recently, but I've also seen him land with the Giants with the 57th overall pick. So we'll see where he ultimately lands, but Joe Tipman out of Wisconsin, another guy that makes sense for the Giants, and Luke Weipler. Now that's the one that I want to key in on because with Luke Weipler, the Giants just sent the contingency to Ohio State. Now we're all talking about how we know for sure they're trying to scout Jay and they're really interested in getting that wide receiver one. Do not sleep on the fact that the Giants were absolutely taking a look at Luke Weipler, the center out of Ohio State. They sent nine scouts, nine personnel men to uh, Ohio State's pro day. They weren't all focusing in on JSN guys. They absolutely were taking a look at Luke Weipler, a guy who could be a day one starter at the center position if they draft him to be. And he also has a weird draft projection. PFF has actually moved him up. He's now the number one center on PFF's draft board, but he still has a, a draft projection anywhere from round one to round three. So this could be a second round target for the Giants. I think that would make a lot of sense. But do they have to go with a center in rounds one or two? No, I don't think so because there's a lot of guys who end up panning out after being developmental guys in the middle rounds. But that's kind of where the argument boils down. Would you rather go offensive line early or wide receiver early? And that's where the conversation now is going to transition to Zay Flowers and that fact that the New York Giants are having dinner with another top wide receiver prospect. I think this is really interesting because a lot of fans and analysts alike took a look at what the Giants did did this offseason in free agency, you know, trading for Darren Waller, who can be their WR1 in production, but still be an elite tight end. They they went ahead and they got Paris Campbell. They extended Darius Slayton. So it's all good now, right? They're just, they're just done. Their offense is set. No, the Giants aren't looking at it that way, and I'm happy about that. They're still on the search for a WR1, whether that is Jackson Smith and Jigba, whether that is Jordan Addison, Quentin Johnson, or the guy who they're meeting with, Zay Flowers. So, Alex, what are your thoughts on that? You know, we, we've talked a lot about this offense, how it looks majorly upgraded, super far improved compared to where it was last offseason, right? Going into the season, are we comfortable with this group, or do you like the fact that the New York Giants are continuing to search for that WR1, and how much of a priority do you personally feel that should be? I mean, it, it should be 
top two priorities. You know what I mean? I mean, center, you can get a guy in the second round. Like, there's guys, you know, you mentioned Weipler um, and Joe Tittman are, you know, kind of right there in the similar range of, like, 40 to 50, 55. Um, so you can get a guy in the second round, no problem. Like, that's that's a solution for the Giants. They could even move up a couple spots in the second round, and it'll cost them a, a, a late-round pick uh, to make sure they get their guy. Adding, this is a very strong wide receiver class. I know a lot of people are concerned about Zay Flowers and his size. He gained 13 pounds, um, a lot of which was muscle this offseason. And he has the frame of Steve Smith and the agility of Antonio Brown. You know, he's got the physical traits to be elite. The question is, you know, can he actually do that at the NFL level? Obviously, that's yet to be seen. But I trust our coaching staff. You need to give Daniel Jones a top receiver because we have never seen him with a top receiver. You have him under contract for four years. Let's make the most of the four years. Let's give him the weapons. If you, in addition, you know, a take that, you know, a lot of people are kind of forgetting about is that if you get a wide receiver one, if you provide Jones with more weapons, it doesn't only help Daniel Jones. It helps Saquon Barkley because you don't have to rely on him to carry the load on offense anymore. The reason he gets injured so quickly every year is because we're leaning on him for 25 to 30 touches for the first couple games of the season, and we don't need to do that anymore. You know, if we go and get a Jordan Addison or, a, you know, a JSN or whatever it might be, you have so much attention going towards Darren Waller, who has wide receiver one production level potential. You have Hodgins. You have Slayton coming back. You have Shep. You have Paris Campbell. You have Saquon Barkley. Uh, and then you add a wide receiver one to that mix, or at least, you know, what you hope to be a wide receiver one in the, uh, at the 25th overall pick. Saquon Barkley benefits directly from that. Daniel Jones, you're finally able to see. Can he, you know... Um, elevate his game. We didn't see the best of Josh Allen until he had Stephon Diggs. You know, we won't see the best of Daniel Jones until he has his top gun, his top guy. And a lot of people like reference chemistry. We saw Jones and Hodgins develop chemistry in like two weeks. Okay. So good players assimilate fast. Good players maximize everybody around them. They make life easier for everybody. And, you know, the defense could use some support, yes, but I do think that this is an offensive league right now, and if we want to maximize Daniel Jones, like we saw, the defense was solid last year, despite the fact that we couldn't stop the run. Now we have, you know, Roche, uh, Nunez Roche, and you, you you have Kayvon Thibodeau going into his second year, you have a healthy Aziz Ojolari, you have Dexter Lawrence going into a big year, Leonard Williams is back and healthy, you're probably going to add some more guys, DJ Davidson eventually get back, who was looking good before the ACL tear, um, you get Darian Beavers back, you know, who knows what he's going to provide, you have uh, Bobby Okereke now, uh, maybe you go out, you have Bobby McCain to replace Julian Love, who, you know, we'll discuss a little bit here. But overall, <clears throat> excuse me, you can go out, get yourself a wide receiver one, get yourself a center, and use the third, fourth, and fifth rounds to really bolster. And I and even mentioned guys like Cordell Flott, who we have a lot of uh, expectations for. Um, but, you know, this is a situation where the Giants can go into those mid rounds and say, okay, let's go get ourselves a, a cornerback. Let's go get ourselves another linebacker. Let's go get ourselves some uh, some interior pass rush, some interior run stoppers, guys that just can provide depth. You know, they're still talking to Ashawn Robinson. Um, there's still some hope there that they can get a deal done. And ultimately, you look at this roster as a whole and you say to yourself, okay, look, we need a couple pieces, but the priority is always going to be making sure that Daniel Jones succeeds. And that is what every NFL team is doing right now with their quarterbacks, giving them the weapons. Jalen Waddell, the guy can barely stand, and like I hope to God that he's not permanently injured from all the concussions he had. I mean, he definitely is going to be, but hopefully it doesn't affect his life down the road too much because it's just really sad to see, and I keep trotting him out there. His career should be over just based on all the injuries he's had to this to his brain. Um, and But you look at what they've done to that offense. They got Tyree Kill. They got Jalen Waddell. Uh, they've just been adding more and more and more pieces. You know, Patrick Mahomes is just so good, he makes everybody look great around him. But you look at like you know what they did with Derek Carr and you know Devonta Adams had a ridiculous year under uh, under Derek Carr's uh, leadership under the helm and you know obviously he goes over to the Saints now and you got Michael Thomas coming back and maybe they go they have uh, Chris Olave they just drafted last year in the first round there is so many quarterbacks that have top receivers and they maximize them and you need to give quarterbacks weapons Daniel Jones has never had a wide receiver one in his career we've seen him throw into the likes of guys I've never even heard of Marcus Johnson for goodness sake you know he finally has a couple of like low end wide receiver twos on this roster right now and like that's the best he's ever had you know what I mean the best he's ever had is low end wide receiver twos and even when he's had guys like Shep who when healthy is really solid they get injured and, they, and then they're gone and, they're, and you don't have them and you know this is an opportunity for the Giants to really give him the necessary weapons that he can rely on and Darren Waller is going to be that guy if he can stay healthy so yes I do think wide receiver is still a priority I do think that there's a pretty much a seven I'd say there's a 75 percent chance we go after one of those top guys and you then you show up the offensive line with a center you got Bredesen you got some guys competing at left guard Josh Azudu um you have you know Glowinski who's serviceable Evan Neal at right tackle hopefully takes a big a big step forward and you have you know one of the best left tackles in the game and Andrew Thomas things are progressing well 
This, the NFL is an offensive league now. The Giants are acting like it. So, you know, based on the, their moves recently, I would say, and based on the fact that their meeting was Zay Flowers tonight and having dinner with him, they've had uh, dinner with JSN, met with Jordan Addison. You know, based on the fact that they're going in this direction, it leads me to believe that they're very much committed to helping Daniel Jones be the best quarterback he can be um, because they have a small window here, right? The outs, they can get out of this in two years, right? They can get out of the contract in two years. So they want to see... How good can we be in this two-year span? How good can Daniel Jones be for us before we have to make that big decision? So, you know, I'd say it's pretty fair to, to assume they're going to make sure that they can capitalize on that now. Yeah, 100%. And it's actually interesting because we had a conversation about it last night in the live stream. If you guys didn't miss it, it's on the channel. Go check it out and make sure to tune in every Wednesday or Tuesday night. Do the live streams right here on the channel. I was talking with Jay Dimes. Shout out to you, brother. I know you watch the channel. And we were discussing the wide receivers in the draft and whether or not we'd be willing to trade up for them. And we all came to the conclusion in the chat that, yes, we should. The Giants, if they want their guy, they're probably going to have to trade up to go get their guy. And I think that when you're looking at it, JSN, his draft projection is anywhere from the ninth overall pick to the 27th overall pick a guy like Zay Flowers same thing he gets mocked a lot to the 25th pick with the Giants however he also goes in the top 15 if the Giants want to go get their wide receiver they're gonna have to pull off a similar trade that the Detroit Lions did last year to get Jamison Williams they moved up from 32 all the way to 12 they moved up 20 draft picks and all they really gave up in exchange they moved it down in the second round while moving up in the first round I think it was a trade with the Falcons so if the Giants want to go ahead move up get their guy but also move down on the second round, I am all for that. And I think that this, that's exactly what they should do. If they feel like there's one or maybe two guys in this draft class who are bona fide wide receiver ones, primary receiving threats, and that's the last piece that they think they need for their offense, yes, they should go ahead, sacrifice some additional draft capital, move up in the draft, and go get that wide receiver. But Alex, I know that we kind of discussed this before, but like, what do you? how do you feel about that, trading up to go get that guy? Like that number one receiving threat, whether that be JSN, whether that be Jordan Addison, how do you feel about giving up some draft capital in the middle rounds to go make that happen? Um, so, you know, I would say that this is also kind of breaking news, by the way. The Giants are signing uh, wide receiver Jamison Crowder to a one-year deal that just broke like three seconds ago. Really interesting. We'll talk about that in a second. But moving up, I, I don't see the, the the harm, right? I don't see – like it, it depends how far, though. I'm not moving up that far – uh, for a for a receiver, I'd rather sit still and and you know not give up any mid round picks. But again, if like if the Giants are interested in trading for a guy like Hopkins or they're interested in trading for a guy like Cooks or Jerry Judy, you also have to be willing to trade up to get the guy that you want in the draft because that's a long term solution. Whereas the other ones are kind of stop gaps and they only have like so much time left on their bill. I mean Jerry Jerry Judy is a little bit different because he's younger and obviously um you know a little bit more injury prone than some. But Hopkins maybe two years until he starts to decline. Brandon Cooks I believe is already uh, you know kind of headed toward the end of his prime as well. So you know. I'd say if you're willing to trade picks for one of those guys, you have to be willing to trade picks to move up and get one of your guys in the draft. So I'm not trying to like trade the hall. I'm not trying to give away our second round pick. But if it takes a third round pick to go up and get Addison, to go up and get JSN, and like the Giants feel like those guys can be like game changers, I'm all for doing that. Like I think that that's totally reasonable because I'm I don't want to be sitting here scratching our head like why didn't we do that? Like why look at JSN, look at Addison, they're tearing up the league, and we had a chance to pull the trigger and we didn't. Like, I don't want to have any regrets based on the fact that all these guys are great, have great characters, and they're, they're great humans, and they're very, very talented. And our coaching staff, I believe, our coaching staff get the most out of them. So I think that answers the question. But what are your thoughts on Jameson Crowder here? Nice little veteran piece can play inside and out. Um, productive throughout his career, but I think this is more of a depth signing than anything else. Yeah, I think it's a veteran depth signing, but I have like a, a really nice connection that I want to bring up here, and it's the fact that Daniel Jones is very familiar with Jamison Crowder. Jamison Crowder is one of the very few NFL players that came from Duke University, just like Daniel Jones, and during the pre-draft process when Daniel Jones was getting ready for the draft, and in a few off-seasons while Jones is over at Duke working with Dave Cutcliffe, his former head coach over at Duke, he's thrown with Jamison Crowder. They're, like, they're friends. They know each other. They've worked out together. They've practiced together. So I actually really like this signing for that reason alone. I just like that it's another name that is familiar to Daniel Jones, just another veteran guy with some experience, good locker room fit, who can be kind of just a weapon in practice for Daniel Jones. I think that's mainly what it is. They can really just work down on timing routes and everything like that. He's a workaholic just like DJ. They've worked together before. I think that it's a really good fit here for the New York Giants. I think this is like a very low-key, unexpected signing. I didn't exactly um, see this one coming, but... 
also another thing connection he did play for Buffalo last season now I know that the Giants brass a lot of these guys came from Buffalo they weren't there last year they came over after the 2021 season but I'm sure that Brian Dable probably reached out to Ken Dorsey or someone else on the Bills staff and was like hey does Jamison Crowder still have it in him and they probably were like well you know what he's a depth piece go ahead and sign him and that's what the Giants did so it's a one-year deal for Jamison Crowder again a veteran at one point in his career he was a very good player in 2019 he had 833 yards after getting force fed 122 targets by the New York Jets <laughs> so I just that's crazy being the number one receiver on the New York Jets must be a difficult time but Jamison Crowder again Duke product has a familiarity with Daniel Jones I think he'll be a really solid piece for Daniel Jones to practice with a depth piece for the Giants and a veteran I like this signing yeah, it's fine. Look, it's dead. This is this does not impact any draft situations at all. Like in if you're if you're thinking that, get that out of your head right now because this is a depth signing. The Giants are committing to building out the depth of this wide receiver core, and that's a really good thing. Because think about how many injuries we've had in the past and we've been left like, you know, with just nothing. Jamison Crowder is an experienced veteran. You know, he knows what it takes to play well. He had 700 yards two years ago with the Jets at 27 years old. He's still only, to, what, 29, 30 years old. On the back of it, his career, there's probably a minimum deal at the very most. Um, he's, yeah, he's still only 29. This is fine. He can play slot. He can move outside a little bit. Um, good catch rate. You know, this is an experienced guy. Like, these are the type of players you want on your roster. You know, these are the type of guys you can trust um, to fill in if need be on a very cheap deal. And then the guarantees are probably next to nothing. So you could always move on if need be. Um, this is fine. You know, as, as you're trying to build a foundation of a unit, these are all just one year deals. Like these are one and done. You know, these are really cheap, easy contracts to, to get. And ultimately the giants could end up, they, they probably cut somebody like they, maybe they restructure Darnay Holmes contract and that pays for James and Crowder. Maybe they, they cut someone and basically they just fill you know, the, the spot that they release with another minimum deal like James and Crowder, and they just see the value there as, as depth. Um, but it also suggests to me that maybe the Giants don't spend a lot of uh, late round picks at the receiver position. You know, I think that maybe they're going to go with that one big one in the early, and then they're going to kind of ride with these, you know, veteran depth pieces and use those late round picks for the defense. That's kind of like what I'm getting from this strategy so far is that I wouldn't expect the Andreas Yosivas, the, you know, Michael Wilsons and some of those later round options to be very much a focal point for the Giants. I think we're looking at like cornerbacks, linebackers, defensive line depth. Like you're going to see a lot of, I think I think this year we'll see a lot of defensive um, mid-round, late-round picks and maybe some offensive linemen mixed in there. So, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think this kind of changes the strategy now that the Giants are investing a lot in like these veteran like one-year receivers maybe and you still have um Colin Johnson too who we haven't even referenced they have a lot of receivers right now on the roster and they may even add another one through the the, the 25 25th overall pick so I kind of feel like maybe they're looking to use some of those uh later mid-round picks on on defensive depth pieces maybe offensive linemen no, I don't think this, this really changes the strategy at all. Adding another veteran receiver, adding a bunch of veteran players, another one that we're going to get into in a second is Bobby McCain. I just think that this is the Giants adding camp bodies. When you get to July, you know, when you get to training camp, you have to have 90 players on your roster. That's going to get trimmed down to 51. This guy is just going to be another one on a list of 90. Like, this isn't really all that notable. It's just another guy who's going to go out there, compete in practice, and maybe during the training camp process, he sheds a little bit of insight, gives a player, a younger player on the team, a tip. You know, just a, just a little bit of advice that applies to his life and his career going forward. That's why the Giants are going after all these veteran guys, in my opinion. It's not because they want them to go out there and play football during the regular season. It's because they want them to be in the locker room for training camp, just to be there there and really give the guys um, a sense of camaraderie, first of all, because they're veterans, they know how to handle a locker room, and of course, to give a little bit of advice. They're not signing player coaches, you know, it's not like how Dave Gettleman used to get like Antoine Bethea off the streets, right, and just throw Antoine Bethea into the back end of the defense to stink it up. It's not like that. A guy like Jamison Crowder probably doesn't play in the regular season for the Giants, but it does a couple things for the Giants to sign him now. First of all, gives him gives another veteran to the locker room for training camp and it also gives the Giants a connection to Jameson Crowder where if they make a solid impression on him well once we get to the regular season if the Giants suffer an injury and Jameson Crowder is a free agent because they cut him after training camp they can just go ahead call him and say hey you know the playbook you know our players you know this coaching staff sign with us real quick because we need you on an emergency deal in the middle of the regular season it's all about just laying seeds right now and that's what the Giants are doing so again I like it I think that Jameson Crowder good connection here and I also feel similarly about Bobby McCain however I do 
do think that he makes it into the regular season. Bobby McCain, a veteran who started a lot. He's very versatile. He's played all over the field. He's played pretty much every position on the defensive backfield. This is a guy who's here to supplement Julian Love's uh, departure. Now, I don't think that he's going to be the, the full-time starter the same way that Julian Love was, and I don't think he's anywhere near the same caliber player that Julian Love is, but Bobby McCain has the ability to play a similar utility role like the one that Julian Love played all those years leading up to 2022 as a rookie and, uh, you know, on his rookie deal. Julian Love would just play anywhere that the Giants needed, to, needed him to before he won that starting job. What I think with the Bobby McCain thing is that the Giants are going to, like you just said, find those starters, those depth pieces, those defensive players in the middle rounds. There's a few safeties that I think can actually start day one and you draft them in round three. I did a breakdown the other day on the channel. Go check it out if you haven't already. But I talked about three draft targets for the Giants at the safety position, who I think could legitimately replace Julian Love. One of them being Jordan Battle, Alabama safety, who's friends, close friends with Xavier McKinney, referred to Xavier McKinney as his mentor, plays a lot of Xbox with Xavier McKinney. So I like Jordan Battle. That could be the Giants replacement for Julian Love in the middle rounds. But Bobby McCain, I think that he plays that depth role, lines up wherever they need him to in the secondary. And so that's why I kind of like that signing. But Alex, what are your thoughts on the signing of veteran Bobby McCain? It's a fine signing, man. It's cheap. You know, you're looking at a player here who's got experience. He's five foot nine, 197 pounds. He's a smaller guy. But he said that they brought him in to play safety. He's going to be competing for the starting spot alongside Xavier McKinney and probably competing with Dane Belton, if we're being honest. Um, he had 76 tackles, with three tackles for loss, five passes defended, and um, a forced fumble last year. So, you know, he's got some, some value. Definitely um, a decent player with decent coverage skills. Uh, if you guys don't remember, he had a pick six against us a couple years ago, I believe. He's only 29 years old. And he's played 17 games for uh, two consecutive years. So you, you like to see that level of reliability because the Giants have been, you know, injury prone at a lot of different positions. So I do like this this signing for the Giants. It's cheap. You know, he can fill the starting uh, strong safety role if need be, if you don't have another option there. And he has a utility value. He can play the slot, can play free, can play strong. Um, you know, he can really move around this defense kind of like Julian Love, but at a much, much cheaper price point. So I'm fine with this. I don't think this is a like a anything anyone should be concerned about this in fact I think that he's probably a very you know maybe he's a little bit worse than Julian Love but I think that for the price you're talking about like what is he I don't know what the deal is one year or something do you know how many million it was for Bobby maybe? McCain it was just the veteran minimum I mean that's ridiculous look you're talking about a guy that's getting the veteran minimum are, are you really can anyone make the argument that Julian Love is six times better than Bobby McCain right, because he's getting $6 million a year, so, like, theoretically, like, that would be the argument. Is he six times better than Bobby McCain? No, of course not. So, you know, you're getting good value here for a minimum deal, um, so I think it's it's a fine situation for the Giants. I, I like this player. I like what they did here. Saved a couple bucks. I love, Mc I love Julian Love, but the fact that Jordan Poyer got paid less than him says a lot about the safety market and the fact that, you know, the Giants were not going to go that high, and I think that's kind of reasonable to, to assume. Yeah, and honestly, with the Julian Love thing, it's really interesting because if you read the reports about it, Alex, Julian Love messed up. He tried to bet on himself, and he screwed up. The Giants gave him a contract offer around $10 million per season during the middle of the regular season last year. He said, no, I think that the safety market's going to boom in the offseason. I'm going to play it out, see if I can cash in with a different team, or you guys have to pay me more, whatever. Then he ended up getting two years, $6 million. Kind of sucks. Julian Love, a really good guy. He made a mistake. And uh, it, yeah, I'm upset about that one. I wish that he was still here. Really like Julian Love. If you guys have been following the channel for a long time, you know that Alex and I interviewed him a couple of years ago. So it's a little bit of a personal connection. I'm very sad to see him go. Very sad to see that he didn't get all the money that he could have gotten if he accepted that offer with the New York Giants. But again, Julian Love on his way out of here. The Giants now have a big hole to fill at the safety position. Alex, do you feel like Bobby McCain can be the be-all, end-all there? Like they can go with him as a starter? Or is that a, a draft position for you, like a main target in this upcoming draft? I mean, look, I, I'm fine with him competing alongside Dade Belton for the starting strong safety job, right? Like, we have other priorities. We need a CB2. We need to add more depth there, a lot more depth. You have Aaron Robinson, so maybe he comes back and offers some value. But, you know, you need another linebacker. You know, you probably got to, unless you're hoping Darren Beavers or McFadden kind of steps up and takes over that LB2 role, you need some more interior, you know, off uh, defensive line support. We could use some more pass rushers, right? Like, there's a lot of things this Giants defense needs, and I don't think... Um, that strong safety is a position that they're looking to, like, it's not the most valuable spot, right? Like, there's other spots that are a lot more important. So I think they prioritize those and just kind of roll with they got a strong safety. And they, they, they drafted Dave Belton in the fourth round for a reason. They want him to take that big step forward. And I think they're going to commit to their coaching and let, them, let, let him kind of fight it out and hopefully win that job. 
Yeah, and I, I like Dane Belton. I think he's a gamer. He's a good kid. He's um he fought through a lot of adversity in his rook- his rookie season, suffering a collarbone injury and I think a couple others during the regular season. Kind of was just banged up the whole year, but still made an impact when he was out there. Had an interception. He also recovered a fumble. I like him. I think that Dane Belton does have a pretty bright future, and I think that he could play a role similar to the one that Julian Love was playing before he moved to the safety position full time. But again, there are some mid round talents at the safety spot that I really like for the Giants. They just make a lot of sense. All of these guys really fit the role that the Giants are looking for. One of the those safeties who can kind of get into the box and uh, compete and run support. So I don't know. It's going to be really interesting to see what the Giants do at that position and, you know, taking a look at some of these guys that they could draft uh, in this upcoming 2023 NFL draft. But of course, we're going to be keeping you guys updated on all New York Giants news leading up to the draft, so on and so forth right here on Fireside Giants. So make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode and subscribe to the channel down below if you are new and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. We will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one and let's go Giants.